In order to get down to the Hunley site, where the conservation is actually taking place, you have to get into one of these large uh, hangars at the old Charleston Navy base, and then uh, wind your way up a long metal staircase, and then get up over the top of the conservation tank, and then work your way back down through the support systems uh, on ladders down to the Hunley site. Uh, once you're there, um, it's really overwhelming. The sub itself is in absolutely remarkable condition. It was completely silted over uh, within 10 or 15 years of sinking, and this silt was was an excellent preservation uh, compound. It was anaerobic. Uh, there's very little. Uh, there's very little rust. Uh, although there's an orange tinge to the metal, uh, it is, it's still very, very strong, full, hardly worn at all. And uh, as they remove the silt from the interior, the crankshaft is still in place, the pump handles for the ballast is still in place, the seating arrangement for the crew is still there. There's even... Uh, air ducts that run under the seat that uh, that circulated the air through the submarine. It is remarkably well preserved. At the time that I arrived, they were still removing the human remains from the, uh, from the sub uh, and uh, had, uh, were working on the eight crew members and had yet to work on uh, the helmsman. So there was still a, uh, a fair amount of silt uh, in the bottom of the sub uh, and that they were working carefully through and removing uh, the bones, which were all that were left of the, uh, of the human uh, uh, beings that went down with that ship. There, were, there was some cloth, some portions of cloth. There were buttons. There was a pipe. There were personal belongings. Uh, uh, a canteen, uh, uh, quite a number of, uh, uh, of small artifacts, including a small oil lamp, uh, which was probably the only light that they had in this sub. Uh, uh, it's remarkable to think of these nine men crammed into that tiny, tiny cylinder, and not only crammed in, but all having a job to do and uh, hard physical labor to undertake. Uh, it's inconceivable by today's standards that uh, you could get these nine men underwater and breathing. They, they really had only uh, the most primitive of snorkel systems. Uh, the air in that thing must have been foul for most of the trip. Uh, it it really was remarkable that they were able to turn this uh, uh, small vessel into uh, an effective uh, weapon of war. So uh, I suppose when they were excavating the bodies, they would, um, like, you, you, they weren't just, it wasn't just a bag of bones. This was one complete, tell me, was it, do you think it was? Well, the, the um, the bodies were uh, really quite distinct, although uh, because the submarine landed uh, uh, nearly upright, and uh, most of the the people, in fact, it looks as if every one of the crew members really died in their position. So that uh, although the bones were separated, uh, they were each in discrete areas, and they, I. It really looks as if the way the excavation was taking place that they would be able to to basically have nine discrete bodies when they were done. These these bodies, do you have any idea where they might be buried? All of the bodies, you know, the Hunley story is a remarkable story. There were th there were several crews that died in the development of this uh, uh, weapon. And uh, they are all being uh, buried in the same uh, grave site with full military honors. So there's, there is a cemetery, uh, an area of a cemetery that is set aside specifically for those men who lost their lives in the Hunley.
when you go and actually get an opportunity to look at the Hunley up close, one of the first things that uh, that hits you is its hydrodynamic form. The way that the sections of the hull were put together uh, left no ribbing showing. The way that the rivets were formed, they were headless rivets that were flush to the surface of the submarine so that she had an absolutely sleek outer hull and was as hydrodynamic as she could possibly be. The hydroplanes, the way the conning tower was positioned, the crank system, which was offset with gears so that it wasn't right in the center of the sub but was off to one side, the propeller system itself, the air intake system, the pumping system for the ballast. This was an immensely sophisticated uh, weapon, and it was uh, sophisticated well beyond anything I could have possibly imagined when I first uh, heard about this vessel. This was an exceptionally well-thought-out craft. I notice little portholes in it, or little light things. Yes. The Hunley did have several uh, portholes, one in each section of the of the vessel. Um, they would have afforded a small amount of light uh, when she was submerged in daylight, uh, but in her nighttime raids, once that candle was out, these men were literally working in complete darkness. There was there was one small little oil lamp found and then uh, several candles. So they could have some light, but of course any of that light, uh, any open flame would just be competing for the available oxygen. So it just, uh, uh, and of course made them uh, that much more visible to the enemy. So it would in all probability uh, have meant that they spent most of their time in near total darkness. Uh, again, just makes their accomplishment that much more remarkable. You know, I've had the opportunity to see lots of conservation efforts and lots of dedicated people working on important artifacts, but I don't think I've ever seen or felt the same sense that I had when I went in to watch these people working on the Hunley. There's a reverence about this wreck that has to do, I think, with the fact that it is such a small vessel and it holds nine bodies. I think it, that has something to do with it. But there's a, there's a sense of reverence around that wreck site and around that conservation effort and around that runs through the people who are working on it, that's a palpable thing. You can actually, you, you, you get an immediate sense of how important they think this site is. But above and beyond this, there's a reverence that they hold uh, that remains of that Hunley in. And uh, I'm quite sure that it relates to the nine brave souls that lost their lives in that very, very small vessel. I mean, it's if you went there, if you went there, Bill, and sorry, you'd have that you get the same feeling that this this it's like going into a church. You really feel like you've 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 entered a church, or you've you've uh, you've walked into a a cemetery, and there are people uh, in the middle of a of a burial service. You get that same kind of sense when you're down at the at the Hunley site. And you get that sense from everyone who's working uh, with a small pick and a small trowel just moving layer after layer of sediment off uh, and, and getting it out of, that, uh, out of the vessel. It, uh, it's very, very clear that there's a really strong feeling uh, of, uh, of empathy with those, uh, with those nine men.